Hey guys, welcome back to Nat1 Videos. In this episode, I'm finally tackling a build that I've been meaning to make for quite some time. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while will probably remember my Dwarven Pillar Carving tutorial that I did back in September last year. I had been whittling wood for a while and I decided to apply the same techniques to XPS Foam with a view to improving my crafting for tabletop gaming. Ever since I've done that tutorial, I've been meaning to include the Dwarven Pillars design into an actual build, but have never had the right idea. Quite a few of you guys out there have tried the tutorial and come up with awesome ways to include the pillars in your own builds and have been sending me pictures and they all look awesome, but I still haven't done anything myself. Well, that's something we shall have to remedy, isn't it? So finally I've come up with an idea that I really like, Dwarven Bookends, of course inspired by the Lord of the Rings and how I imagine the entrance to a great undermountain Dwarven Kingdom like Erebor. I know that book nooks are all the rage right now, but to show off the pillar design I needed them to be exposed. So basically I'm turning the book nook inside out. Instead of putting something in between the books, I am putting the books between the something. I should mention that I didn't want this video to be a tutorial on how to carve the pillars themselves as I already have a full in-depth tutorial on this on my channel. If you would like to see exactly how I carve these step by step then open the link that is at the top of the screen right now and check out the tutorial after this video. This video is just about how I'm using that design within a fully realised project. I wanted to come up with a design for these bookends that was going to look good in more than one orientation so that they could also be used as a book nook or a bookshelf insert and also so that they could be used as playable terrain for the tabletop. But my primary focus to begin with was that they look good as bookends. When it came to building the structure of the bookends I wanted them to be really sturdy so that they could handle a few knocks and have a little weight to them so that they are effective at keeping books in place. Gladly I had access to some really nice leftover wood flooring panels which fit the purpose perfectly. I measured it so that the bookends would be about 8 inches tall and the base would be about 6 inches wide. Now I am not a joiner so this task was slightly out of my comfort zone, everything was going well until I hit a snag. Because my saw blade was close to the edge the blade guard kept catching. I couldn't see exactly what was going on so I enlisted the help of my father-in-law Phil who is an engineer and basically knows a little something about everything. This is Phil in the window. It's because this part is a thin bit, it was catching, no I don't want to touch the blade, but it was catching in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if that happens on this occasion I now know what to do. Yeah. Just reach over and stop, keep the blade running reach over and pull up. Yep. Okay. Let's see if it works. Phil also helped me get the saw set up to make cuts at a perfect 45 degree angle. Okay, so you just want to draw any old line like that one there, mm -hmm. and then create a clamp there for us to roll. I considered screwing the pieces together for speed, but I wanted the finish to be nice, even in the places where you can't see it. So I opted for wood glue and let it dry overnight. Make sure to wipe away any excess glue because when this stuff dries it's going nowhere. Once everything was secure I clamped the bookends together and used the Dremel to sand off any discrepancies in the cut so that both bookends were exactly the same size. Moving on to taking some cliffs into the project, I decided to use this thick XPS foam which I was recently given by a very generous viewer. I also placed the pillars temporarily into the project just to make sure that things were going to be sitting nicely. I had to glue a few pieces together so I used hot glue even though I probably melted the foam a bit. That wouldn't matter because it wouldn't be exposed anyway. Using XPS meant that I was able to carve out the exact cliff shapes that I wanted with the Proxon hot wire foam cutter. I freehanded these cuts and then did angular cuts to give the cliffs an irregular and more natural look. So as I mentioned earlier I wanted to make these bookends to have some decent weight to them so that meant adding weight. I did this by carving out a recess into the back of the XPS foam, breaking up some rocks and securing them into the back of the foam with hot glue. This worked perfectly and when I glued it into the project you would never know. I was quite pleased with this as a solution actually. With my cliffs glued in place the hardest part of the build was over and it was time to start the process of painting, texturing and flocking. As always starting with a base coat of black Mod Podge paint. I made a slight mistake here by forgetting to use the tin foil ball trick before I painted but this was an easy fix by just texturing it through the Mod Podge and then going back over and touching up the damaged paintwork. 
It wouldn't feel quite right to have a dwarven themed project without adding some dwarven runes. So I cut some thin pieces of XPS foam and carved some runes into them and then textured them with a foil ball again. I chose four words for the front of the project. Findal, Findar, Allah and Torst, which mean divine favour, good fortune, valour and adventure. I then glued these into place and painted them with black mod podge. So at this stage of the build I wasn't really satisfied with my cliff and rock textures so I fell back on one of my favourite techniques that is using bark. Gluing strips of bark in and around the project really helped bring out the natural rocky textures and also helped the pillars to sit into the project in a more believable way as if the dwarves had carved them out of the cliff face. I wanted to add even more small rocky textures to the cliffs so I covered the project in PVA glue and sprinkled more bark that I had cut up to small pieces and blended in the blender. I then painted all the bark with black mod podge with the click of my fingers. Okay, so for the book nook or playable terrain style orientation of the project, I didn't need to go crazy. I just wanted to have a nice dwarven looking arch and a doorway at the top of some steps. I just carved a very simple looking shape into some XPS foam, but I also wanted to include some dwarven runes in this part of the build also. This time I chose the word deck, which means strong. I then textured it up and painted it as I normally do with my rock textures. For the wooden door, I did a base coat of burnt umber and when it was dry, I did a dry brush with yellow ochre. I then glued in some steps that I had carved from XPS foam, textured and painted in the same fashion. Heading into the final throws of the project and my favourite part, painting and flocking. As always I started with a base coat of graphite grey, about 80% coverage so that some of the blacks show through in the shadowy areas. I then dry brushed the whole thing with neutral grey, but I also used some green grey just to give it a little variation. I then mixed some titanium white with the greys for my final highlights to the stonework. Onto all of my earthy green tones I used raw umber in all of the places I wanted to have a grass and turf finish and followed up with a slightly more patchy coat of green that I had mixed up with cadmium yellow and cobalt blue. I also dried off the brush with these colours and dry brushed all of the rocky areas just to blend everything together a bit. You might be thinking that's a hell of a lot of flock going on this but it does add so much colour guys. And all the colours I've used, I don't use bright greens, I don't like bright green when I flock. Um, I like quite a darkish finish. Uh, it does look brighter than it does on camera. So I've been trying to level up my flocking game and as you can hear from that last clip, I've been pinching techniques from Luke over at Geek Gaming Scenics. As it happens, this Sunday Luke will be joining myself, Colin and Daniel over the Crazy Crafter live stream for a chat which we are all really looking forward to. So if you have any burning terrain questions, join us on Sunday and if anyone can answer them, Luke is your guy. I've put a link for the stream and also a link to one of Luke's flocking tutorials in the description below this video. Once I'd sprinkled some different coloured flocks into my PVA glue, I decided to also add some static grass and finally busted out my static grass applicator. Yes, this is a homemade applicator. I received this as part of a big package that was sent to me by a viewer recently. The applicator did work quite well for a homemade tool, but maybe slightly patchy in areas, although this could be entirely because I don't really know what I'm doing here. Still, the experiment was fun. I then sealed all the flock with a spray down of 50-50 water and PVA glue. This morning I was on daddy duty and the project still wasn't quite finished as I wanted to add some grassy tufts. Gladly I was able to enlist the help of my daughter and get it all finished off. Childcare and crafting, multitasking for the win. Perfect, that's great. Okay, now we really are finished. Yeah. Can we shake hands? Yes, we did it. Yeah. All right, good job. There we go guys, that's the end of this week's project. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Uh, if you have subscribed, please hit that bell button and you'll be notified of more videos that are coming out soon. See you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.